our project is looking at a large-scale lake assessment of Lake Superior in regards to human impacts on the lake, um, things like mining and agriculture and um, urban development over the past 300 years. We are using um, techniques in paleolimnology. So what we do is we go to the deepest parts of the lake and we take a sediment core out of um, the sediment archives in the lake because lakes are a depositional environment, so everything washes into the lake and settles at the deepest point. And when we do that, as we go back through the core um, and the sediment becomes older, we can see how the lake and its communities through time, especially um, algal communities like diatoms or a type of algae, how they responded to certain environmental stressors that were affecting the lake. And from that, we can reconstruct um, what happened. Diatoms are a type of algae. They're a golden brown algae. Um, so they have golden brown chloroplasts. So when you first go out to a lake in say early spring and you see all of that um, golden brown kind of stuff covering the bottom of a lake or rocks, things like that, that's all diatoms. Uh, they're a very large class of algae. Um, they provide about greater than 25% of the primary production on earth. Um, so they're a very important group. And what makes them special is they are, um, have cell walls made up of silica, biogenic silica, so it's almost like they have little glass shells. And when they die, these little glass shells can fall to the bottom of a lake and become preserved in the sediment, uh, sort of like dinosaur bones. And so instead of looking at big animals, we look at these itty bitty microscopic algae and they keep a good record of what was going on in the lake at the time that they were alive. We expect to find um, human impacts on Lake Superior, even though it is considered a pristine lake that hasn't been impacted by humans, um, we do expect to find certain impacts, but to a certain extent, we think the impacts will be different in different parts of the lake, because for example, the North Shore has had a lot of mining, um, the Eastern side has had much more um, development and the Sioux locks being built and uh, construction and then deforestation some places in the basin. Um, but in general, we think that the whole lake will show a record of those kinds of changes um, in its watershed through time. We took two sediment cores from the lake that we're looking at now. One was taken from the deep trenches in the eastern basin of Lake Superior in the southeast portion. And the other one is from the central basin of the lake taken um, just off of Isle Royale. This study is the first paleo study of Lake Superior in over 40 years. And so we're filling in a gap of information about Lake Superior because there is monitoring on the lake. But the nice thing about paleo is that it gives you a more integrated view of what's happen happening in the lake. So hopefully this project can kind of give us an idea of what's happening in Lake Superior because several things have changed in the lake in the last 30 years that monitoring has picked up on. Uh, and we can sort of use this information along with the information we already have to decide good ways to manage the lake into the future to make sure that it doesn't have some of the issues that the lower Great Lakes had, uh, like eutrophication and things like that.